Welcome to the Hour of Harvest. It is great to have you here with us and pray you will be blessed. Sit back for the next two hours and enjoy while we share the good news of the gospel. We invite you to participate along with us as we sing, pray, and read the Bible in support of one another on our journey of faith. The Hour of Harvest prayer team is standing by to take your prayer request and praise reports. You may call us at 606-464-4250 anytime during this program. May this program be a place where you feel accepted, loved, forgiven, and encouraged in the Lord. Hour of Harvest is touching countless souls with the unconditional love of Christ from the Appalachian Mountains to the Bluegrass region, across the nation, and around the world. From our studios in Beattyville, Kentucky, here is your host of the Hour of Harvest, Sister Margaret Drake. Good evening and welcome to uh, our empty studio again. <laughs> We're getting kind of uh, <coughs> kind of used to it. There's a, a we're trying to uh, abide by all the rules and and keep uh, keep all the excess people out that uh, so we're staying under the safety number and uh, so tonight we have no one in uh, this studio except our two guests and so you're going to uh, be <coughs> we're going to just visit with you all <coughs> mm. <coughs> well we might <coughs> well <coughs> sorry but <coughs> that's not unusual I've <coughs> fallen <laughs> <coughs> that's well, anyway, uh, we we have Robin and Ellen Ratliff with us tonight, so uh, we will just go over to them. They're already ready, and they're going to share with us. You know, we've uh, we've had this virus that has hit everybody's home, and so they're going to tell us how it has affected them and how they have coped. And so here's Robin and Ellen Ratliff. for being here. <coughs> I always count it a privilege to come to the come here to the hill. Uh, I thank the Lord for WLJC. It's been a, a uplift to me in times that I needed it. And I believe it helped a lot of people. Um, you know when this uh, th this virus uh, came on the scene and everybody everything started shutting down and everything started the, the world went into chaos. Um, I believe the devil was setting back life and you know and I think uh, there's still a, 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 a place in God that you can get that you have peace you have safety and you ain't gonna fear and you ain't gonna worry and uh, I believe that's the place we need to stay in because God is still God <coughs> You know, when they crucified Jesus, I was just talking the other day on a video, when they crucified Jesus and uh, he, he died and they put him in the tomb, you know, it looked like to the world Satan had won. But we all know that he rose again the third day and he's alive and he lives in us. And we all know that God's still God. No matter what we're going through, no matter... What kind? How, how? No matter how much I need to pay my bills, God's got it. No matter, how, matter what I need to get through this situation, God's still God, and God's got it. And I thank Him for that tonight. And I, I just, I just want to to uplift people and let them know that we serve a big God. He's a God that's able. He's well able to take care of little old me. He's well able to take care of little old you. No matter what you're doing, no matter what you're going through, He's well able. And He desires to do it if I'll just look to Him and not look to the government, not look to uh, other people, not look to my pastor, not look to nobody else, but look to Jesus. Because He said He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Yes. And if we'll look to Jesus... He's got everything I need. And He's got it all right there if I just look to Him. Hallelujah. 
And I thank him tonight for being here, Alan. Yeah, it's a, it's a real privilege to be part of WLJC. And, uh, you know, we've been coming here for years and uh, we've seen what God has done here in this ministry. Uh, we see how faithful the people that are over this ministry has been and how important like Sister Dottie and, and those that answer the phones and how important their ministry has been to be here yeah. to just answer calls Amen. when, when Amen. people had needs and, and needed somebody to pray with them. And, and I was thinking about today, you know, it, uh, none of us here, I don't guess, knows how many thousand has been saved through WLJC. I mean, I've heard testimonies and I've heard some numbers. I know one year there was like 250 some people called in and got saved that one year. But over the whole time that WLJC has been on the air, it's hard to say how many people has been saved. And, yeah, and then a lot right. of them got saved and didn't call in and, that's right. and tell anybody. That's right. You know? But God has been so faithful and and people has been faithful, faithful to that's help. Right. Uh, yeah, that's right. You know, we we talk about it.
or make you free. Make I you think free. it says, it says make you free. know the truth and the truth will make you free. That's right. You know, and, and then he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel, which is the good news, and it is the truth. And so, you know, that's our job as Christians, is to get this gospel out and um, so that people have an opportunity. You know, we can't make them receive the truth but we can sure try to get it out there to where they can hear it. Amen. And then it'll be between them and God. That's right. Uh, I yeah. like what one uh, pastor there, he's got a church just two or three miles. And that would look to him. Yeah. But he cannot help people that will not look to him. Uh, it's not that he don't want to. No. You know, he wants to help us. He wants to be there for us. But he just cannot help people that will not turn to him and look to him. You know, the the shape our nation's in today, it, it kind of concerns me because I don't know if we're going to be able to get enough people in power that fear God, you know, and, mm -hmm. and there's some things going on in our nation today, and I'm not talking about just this virus, but there's some things going on in our nation today that I, I feel like if we don't repent of those sins and really turn to God, I, I think our nation's in trouble. Yeah. Uh, because we have just allowed too many things to go. when this is over there's yeah. awakening coming yeah I believe uh, there is uh, more to come yeah. that we don't see right now uh, from this um, people are scared there's a spirit of fear attack people um, but I believe when we you know God said uh, he take us through the storm and I feel like this is a storm. And he ain't going to leave us stuck in that storm. He's going to take me through it and put me out on the other side. And I'm going to go through it and I'm going to be better for it. So I believe the church, his church, is going to be better for it because they're going to learn something. They're going to get stronger. And I believe we're going to see some things that we haven't seen before. It's not in our lifetime. We haven't seen it. So I'm looking forward to coming through this thing because I want to see what God's pouring out. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We've got to trust Him. You know, uh, we, we trust the Lord uh, like the Bible says. It says, trust the Lord with all your heart. Uh, the Bible says to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. But then it also says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Yeah. And uh, 
myself, I just take it a day at a time. Uh, because I've seen too many people make plans and then they wasn't here the next day to yeah, fulfill amen. them plans. Amen. And so I just take it a day at a time. Seems like I have more peace that way. Uh, I get up and I pray and I trust God and, and go on about my day that day. And then when I get up the next day, I do the same thing. I just trust Him a day at a time because He is faithful and... Uh, and you know, uh, uh, we, we need people that will uh, help get the gospel out. Um, I, I know some people that they claim to be saved, uh, but they have no desire to go to church, and they have no desire to see other people saved. And, and I don't understand that. You know, I... Uh, I don't want to judge them. I mean, they say they're saved, uh, so I don't want to judge them. But, but ever since I've been saved, Sister Margaret, I've always wanted to see other people saved. Yeah. And I've always wanted to help try to get the gospel out to other people. Yeah. And so I, I just kind of feel like if you've got an experience with Jesus Christ, it'll cause you to want to reach out to other people. Yeah. And it'll cause you... Uh, there's two things I don't tell people. I don't tell them where to go to church because I think that's between them and God. I think there's a place for all of us. I think there's a work for all of us. So I don't try to tell them they need to come to our church. Uh, and I don't try to tell them how much to give. Because I think that's something else that's in between you and God. I think that it, uh, God can speak directly to you. I think He can tell you where to go to church. And I think He can tell you how much to give. Amen. I think He can tell you when to give and Amen. where to give. That's right. and, I mean, He's always dealt with me that way. I, I never did have to go ask somebody, uh, do you think I should give money here or give money there? I never did have to. God always spoke to me. Uh -huh. <laughs> and sometimes He would uh, tell me to give an amount that I thought I could not afford to give. But, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but when I would obey Him, He would always, He's always He's blessed always us. Blessed He's us. always right. took care of us. Amen. And, uh, so I, you know, I think if you love God, you're going to be praying and, and, you know, to try to get other people saved. You're going you're gonna to support ministries that are getting people saved. Yeah. You know, I don't keep track of, you know, how much I give here or there. I, I think there's being a real good record kept of, of what we're doing Amen. in heaven. Amen. Uh, you know, the book of life is going to be open one day, and that's the main thing. You, you want your name written in that book. That's right. Uh, but the Bible says these other books are going to be open. And, uh, and I believe there's a good record of what we're doing for God being kept. And, and so God can speak to you. You know, if, if you're supposed to be supporting this ministry, then, then the Lord will speak to you and, and uh, tell you exactly how much to give. And, and, uh, and then, uh, you know, if you're supposed to support other ministries, He'll tell you that also. Uh, uh, Robin and I, uh, we, we support other ministries besides this one, but we have always uh, felt really close to WLJC because mm -hmm. they allowed us to come over here years ago and, and have given us a, a place to preach and sing. They and took us in. Took us in kind of <laughs> under their wing. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, but... But you, uh, you know, you just need to pray and, and ask God uh, what He'd have you do. And if you get your mind off of your problems and begin to pray for somebody else and begin to pray for other ministries and, mm -hmm. and uh, other hope. people. Yes. Um, you know, I was uh, thinking yesterday about uh, how many people within walking distance of us are lost without God. Yeah. Uh, our, our church sits on a little road called Tar Ridge, and, and it's a long, windy ridge for miles. 
but there's just one house right after another and and I've often thought of you know on that one ridge uh, there's so and many people lost. that's that don't yeah. know God and and you don't have to go halfway around the world to witness no if God calls you to do that that's what you ought to do but but really there's uh, there's a harvest all around us they there's a there's a big harvest all around this uh, TV station yes, here. Yeah. And of course, it, it gets out a lot further, uh, but but there's such a harvest, and, and the statement is still true that Jesus made when he said, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Mm -hmm. And it's, he said, he told his disciples, he said, you pray that God will send forth laborers into the and uh, yeah. I believe in this last day, that's exactly what we need. We need prayer warriors. We need people that will seek God. We Amen. need people that will finance ministries. Uh, Robin and I both, we work, and, and so we don't, we don't ask people to finance our ministry because me and her still work a job and, and minister when we can. But... Uh, but there is ministries out there like this one and others that is doing a great work. And, and so, you know, if you'll pray and ask God, God will lead you. Amen. And, uh, and you can be useful. You know, I see a lot of people, and, and like I said, I don't count myself old, so I'm not going to put myself in that category <laughs> yet. But, but I do see people, when they get older, uh, uh, like it seems like they they feel like they can't be used you know but man the, <laughs> the older people is the ones that we need to be listening to uh, we need to we need to know what they have been through uh, I used to when I would go to the nursing home there in our county I would sometimes just walk up to some of the older people that was there and and say, has God been good to you? And that's all it took. They would just begin to testify of how good God had been to them. Yeah. And, and people really need to hear that. The enemy will tell you that, uh, oh, they don't want to hear what you got to say, or the enemy will tell you, well, they've heard that before, or whatever. But, uh, but don't hold back on your testimony uh, you testify every opportunity that you get and because uh, the older people, they've been through a whole lot. Uh, the younger generation, they're, we're just now, uh, they're just now starting to go through some things. But uh, there's a lot of older people that's really been faithful to God for years and got a good strong testimony. And, and don't let the enemy tell you just because you've gotten older that, uh, that you're uh, not of any benefit because uh, anybody can pray. You know, you don't have to be a certain age to pray, and you and you certainly don't quit praying when you get older. So you know, if you're old or young, we can all be prayer warriors and and pray and and pray for others. I mean, there's just a lot of people that needs prayer today, and I believe. Uh, I believe it's in the book of James where he said, "The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much." Amen. Yeah. So we all need to be praying and pray for this station. Pray for the people that uh, come up here when when we're having regular service and stuff, and pray for them. And that, that the they, anointing yeah. will be on them. Yeah. You got a scripture? I do. I have a, a verse that just came to me. Uh, it's Deuteronomy 31 and 6. And it says, Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them, for the Lord is with go, the Lord go with thee. Do, or the Lord doeth go with thee. I'll get it in a minute, sorry. Um, he will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Now, I take that as a promise. If he did it for the children of Israel... He's sure going to do it for me. Mm -hmm. After Jesus came, you know, the law is fulfilled. But that's a promise. That's a promise. <laughs> Be strong and of a good courage. 
Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Now, if I was afraid, I'd be reading that to myself just every little bit. I'd probably write it down on a little piece of paper and tape it all over my house. And so I'd read it, and I'd read it out loud to the devil. Because I'm a fighter, and the, the word is alive, and that's what I fight with. That's my weapon. That, that's my sword. So if it's my sword, it's your sword. And if it works for me, it's going to work for you. So I believe that he don't want us to be afraid. He wants us to be of a good courage, and he wants us to take heart that... He is still God, and He wants to be there for His people. You know, we see, Alan gets this uh, book uh, or a magazine of the martyrs in all these other countries. Yeah, Voice of Martyrs. Voice of Martyrs, yeah. And um, you wouldn't believe what Christians in other countries have been going through all these years, and we have had it made in America. No persecution. We haven't had any persecution. But you know, there's been times that we've all been through hard times. We've all been through um, a few hard times. Nothing like they are in a lot of places. Nothing, you know, ain't nobody, ain't nobody going to cut your head off if you go to church. Ain't nobody going to, uh, you know, I mean, just different things like that. They behead people. Uh, you have to hide to gather in church and to worship the Lord. They tear pages out of the Bible and each person will take a page and, and memorize it. And then they'll trade it for another one. You know, things like that. We've not seen that. We've not seen any of that. So God's been good to us. Yes. God has blessed us. He's <laughs> blessed us as a nation. He's blessed us as a people. And his people, he has never forsaken. His people, he has never forsaken. He's not going to now either. I'm talking about his people. Not people that turn their back on him. Not people that uh, won't stand up for what they believe in. Not, not stand up for the word. Not stand up with the word. But I'm talking about uh, his people. That's called by his name. That know him in their heart and know his character and what a God he is. Um, so be of good courage. I love that. I love that scripture. And it just come to me while Alan was talking. But I, I love that verse. And I, I do have it at my house a lot of places. <laughs> and I do read it quite often. <laughs> and another one I read quite often is the whole chapter, Psalm 91. It's, uh, you know, we got to be warriors. We can't just sit down and let the devil beat us up and put sickness on us and us just take it and lay it down and lay down and die. We got a work to do. We got people that, we, that we're going to affect. We've, got, we've got, all got lost family that needs to hear that God's still God, that they need to have that courage and they need to see that courage. And I think uh, we've all, like Alan said, got that work to do. But if we don't get strong in the Word, if we don't get strong in the Word, and that the anointing of God flow through us, He can't use us. I want to get to where He can use me, don't you? I want to get to where I want to affect somebody. I want to go just take myself to heaven, which that's good. I'm, go I'm going. But... I want to take some with me. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. I want to take some with me. Yes. Amen. Go ahead, Al. They, uh, it, it does seem like some people's kind of satisfied if, if they're saved. Uh, if they're forward and, no more. Yeah, yeah, and their little household saved. It does seem like... And, and that is a, that's a great thing, don't get me wrong, that 
uh, we all want our family saved That's and, right. and ready to go, but, but there's people beyond that that we need to reach. And, uh, and of course, you know, you can have such an effect on the, your family and the people you work with and stuff. If you'll just live this life, uh, look to Jesus and, and try to follow after Him. Uh, you know, if we've been born again, then we should bear the image of our Father. Yeah, amen. You know, because when you was born in the natural, uh, you had some traits of your mother and your father. You know, we, you may not look just like them, but you had some of their traits. And, and so when we got born again of the Spirit, then we should resemble our Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. and of course, we are, we're His children. <laughs> And the Bible says we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus, Jesus Christ. Right. So, uh, you know, we should, uh, when they look at us, they should be able to see some of the same traits. And, Amen. And the Bible says that uh, we are to follow in Jesus' footsteps. And that's the reason I try to keep my eyes off a of man is because I'm trying to follow Jesus. Amen. And uh, there's a lot of good preachers and teachers and so on out there, but but I don't try to get my eyes on any man too much or woman because I think I think we need to keep our eyes on Him. Amen. That's uh, right. There's a great work to do. Uh, you know, it's easy to get caught up in grumbling and complaining about how bad the world yes, is. Yes. Amen. And what yes. a terrible place it is, and 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 I've done it myself. I. Sometimes I'd, I'd just, uh, you know, get to talking about how bad and how evil everything is, but but really we need to keep our eyes on Him because uh, if we get right down in the mud with the rest of them, then we're not going to be much of a light. That's right. Uh, but, but we've got a lot to look forward to, and there's a lot of people out there that we can reach uh, if we just work together, and and I'm hoping that that's one thing that uh, this uh, trouble we're going through right now with this virus, I'm I'm hoping that it will bring churches and Christians together uh, in one accord to work together because uh, it's it's no good when we just get in behind our four walls and and won't get out and work with other people. Wow. That's one good thing about this station. Uh, Sister Margaret, it's always, uh, uh, you've never mentioned, well, you have to be this group or that group. It's just uh, non people, yeah, non-denominational and people coming up here and working together for the same cause and uh, right. volunteering. And, you know, it, it, it's really amazing to me when I, when I get to thinking about it. Uh, what God has done, Amen. Uh, here in Batable, Kentucky, it's it's just amazing how how He's used this station to reach out there to people. Amen. And of course, if He if He lays it on your heart, uh, uh, they they need financial help uh, to you know to keep uh, keep the station going, keep the bills paid, and uh, so we need to. If, if the Lord speaks to you, then you need to uh, mail in a check to Amen. them and, Amen. and support them because it, it is good ground. I've always felt like it was good ground That's right. it's to, fertile. to uh, put money into. That's right. Uh, go ahead, Ron. I believe it's fertile ground. Um, it's holy ground. You know, there's been a lot of prophecies come forth from this, from this hill and uh, how God would bless it and how he would send it around the world and, and he's done just what he said he was going to do. How there's been angels that protected it. Uh, you know, Sister Margaret wrote that little book about the angels and uh, she told, tells the story about sitting out there on the picnic, picnic table one night and there was just this massive angel hovering over this place. I feel the Lord when I tell that and when I talk about it. Because there is angels hovering over it. And God's, God's protected it. And He's got to work. And He ain't done with it. I know that. He ain't done. 
So I believe uh, there's going to be more things to come from the he this hill. There's more things God's got, got to do from here. Uh, there's anointing. There's an anointing here that you don't feel other places. It's a different kind of anointing. I can't explain it, but it's a different kind of anointing than what it, you feel in your church or what you feel different places you go. But there's an anointing here, and I think it's because it's being sent out. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how else to say it. It's 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 an anointing that's going out over these these airways that uh, is from this TV station. God had a plan for it. He's got a plan for it. He's got more plans for it than, than we can even see right now. But He's going to do some major things through this station in the next little bit. I'm telling you right now. There's some things coming and I, can, I, I don't see what they are. But I feel it in my spirit that there's more things coming from this place than we have any idea. And it's good stuff. Because when we get through this storm, like I said, when we get through it, God don't just leave you sitting there in a storm. If you look to Him, He's going to take you plumb through it. It's called the eye of the storm. He's going to take me through the eye, and He's going to put me out on the other side, and there is sunshine, and there's, uh, there's something to come after that storm. And it's a Have you ever been outside after a good rain? And big storm come, how smell, how are the air smells fresh and, and clean, and it's just like you just wash the air. There's something coming after this storm. Amen. You can take my word for it. <laughs> Amen. It's, um, it's going to be good, and, and uh, if you're going through a storm tonight, uh, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you you might think we're you know talking about what's ahead and and maybe you feel like you're just in a terrible storm right now yeah you know and uh, there's there's been many people that's lost loved ones yes uh, and you know left you with a broken heart and then they's uh you know you you don't hear as much said about the drug epidemic right now because we're supposed to be in this other pandemic well i don't know the difference between an epidemic and a pandemic but <laughs> but i know that the enemy does try to put a lot of fear on people um, there's there's some things that the news media if you watch uh, secular news media a whole lot turn uh, it off yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't watch much of it a day i mean uh, an hour of it a day is plenty uh, probably, but uh, Morning, but they uh, they there's a lot of things they leave out. Uh, you know, they they fail to tell that 98 percent of the people that's getting this virus is getting over it. They fail to tell that. Uh, you know, and uh, they fail to tell you that 650 thousand people around the world die of the flu each year and we don't shut the economy down for that. And there's a lot of things they leave out that they don't tell people because they want to keep you in this certain spot of fear right now. But I'll try to get off that subject. Yeah. <laughs> um, but maybe you're going through a storm of some other kind. Yes. You know, uh, maybe, maybe the doctors have said you've got cancer mm -hmm. and, and there's no cure. Or maybe you've got some other kind of disease, or, or maybe you're, you know, going through uh, problems in your family, mm -hmm. and, and you know, for years I was one of the worst people to worry. Uh, I mean, I spent a lot of time uh, driving by myself, and uh, and I would drive down the road and just worry about this Let's and worry about play with that, your mind. and and. Uh, you know, it's it's not been that long ago that I realized that I was allowing the enemy to uh, 
just trouble my mind and and put worry and fear and, and, take those and thoughts so active. on and uh, you got to take uh, authority over those thoughts amen you know he take said to cast down imaginations yep. he said cast down imagination so yes. when your mind starts imagining or assuming you know or or premeditating something that's going to happen and speculating and speculating <laughs> that's, that's the word i was trying to get there <laughs> when you start letting the enemy cause you to think uh things uh, you know you you got to go to the word uh, they the word is what saved us it's what it will heal us it's what will keep us and yes. in the beginning was the word and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, yes. and His Word is still God. Amen. This is a covenant. This is a covenant. Amen. And when she reads them promises, those are promises. And, and God probably didn't have to bind Himself by His Word, but He chose to. Yes, He did. He yeah. chose to bind Himself by His Word. And He said because He could swear by no greater, He swore by Himself. Yeah. And the covenant that he made with Abraham, you know, it's a covenant. Amen. And and there's some ifs in that covenant. If you will, yeah. then I will. Yeah. And and a lot of people overlooks that big word if. Yeah. But but a lot of the promises of God are if you will. You know, he said, If you will hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. And, and so it's a lot of it's up to us, but I have tried uh, here for the last couple of years or maybe longer, I have tried to take those thoughts uh -huh. and, and as soon as, as the enemy tries to put a thought in my mind that, I, that is not right mm -hmm. or tries to put fear, I try to, I take that and cast it down right then. Mm -hmm. And I ask the Lord to forgive me for even thinking it. You know, I, I might not have to do that, but I just think it makes the devil mad. So I do it anyway. Yep. <laughs> uh, but I try to take those thoughts, you know, don't, don't let the devil just fill your mind full of all kinds of things. Uh, because that's the only way he's got to get at you. Yeah. Is, is through your mind. And uh, if you take, take them, those thoughts and, and, uh, cast them down, and then begin to get into the Word. The Word is the most important thing you Amen. can put in your mind, into your heart. Amen. And, you know, then also, if you've got the Word inside of you, if you know what the Word of God says, then when you get to talking to people about things, the verses will come up of yes. what Jesus what, said. Yes, amen. You know, people really don't need my opinion. They need to know what... God said. Thus saith and, the Lord. Uh, yeah. and, I, and I try, you know, it's, it's hard not to give your opinion. I know we all have that trouble. Uh, or most, not all. I, I have seen some people that they, if you wanted their opinion, you about had to prize it out of them. But, <laughs> but uh, most of us will freely give you our opinion. Amen. <laughs> but if our opinion is not what God said, then it's really not worth much. No. You know, you. but His Word his word makes a difference. Amen. And and maybe you're going through a storm or a valley. Maybe you you feel like you've been in it a long time. You know, you read those stories in the Bible, like the one little woman that was sick for 18 years. Yeah. Another one was sick for 12 years. That's a long time. Yes. To be sick and be burdened down. Uh, another woman had lost her husband and and uh, lost both of her sons and you know you you read stories in the bible where people went through things yes and uh, you know like she was talking about me reading those magazines the voice of martyrs from around the world uh, there is a lot of people being persecuted and going through things and and their testimony of how they got through that storm and through that battle the reason I read them is because it encourages me. I read the story about Stephen. You know, Stephen was a man that was just called really to help the widows and orphans, but he ends up preaching a, 
a sermon that got him stoned to death. Yeah. You know, but, but that story encourages me. It, it makes me think that a person can get to the place yep. that they're willing to lay down their life for Jesus. Amen. And, and really, Jesus said, except we're willing to take up our cross and follow Him, we're really not worthy of Him. Yeah. So we got to be willing. And, uh, you know, we got to be willing to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Him. And, and sometimes it ain't comfortable. Sometimes, most time, it's not easy. I, I guarantee you, Margaret will tell you that uh, uh, taking care of this station has not always been easy. No. But it's always been rewarding, you know, to see those souls come in. Been and worth to it. see people get help. There's a lot of people been fed by this station for years and years. They, they've got their spiritual food every night. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, one preacher can't do that, could he? No. He couldn't be in all those places no. at one time. No. But this station can go out and cover miles and miles, uh, thousands of people in one night yes. just from this place. And yes. a lot of people's got their spiritual food because I've heard their testimonies. Yeah. You know, when people find out that you, you come here and, and that you uh, that we've came here and sung and preached and so on, they'll see you out and they'll testify and they'll yeah. tell you what the station means to them. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's one thing that really encourages you yeah. when you see how much good it's doing. But Amen. If you're going through a storm tonight, you, you need to call upon Him. You need to look to Him. And there is people that will hear that will pray with yes, you. Yes, Dottie's up there. Dottie's up there tonight, and and she will pray with you if you if you need prayer, or if you're lost tonight and you don't know the Lord. Uh, man, there's nothing like being a child of God. Amen. It's 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 far beyond it. It's uh, you can't put a price on it. I I don't even know what to compare it to. Uh, just to be able to say, I'm a Christian, I'm a child of God, I'm an heir of God. It's, it's far greater than anything. But we love you tonight and we want you to, we want you to call in if you need prayer. Rob. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I love that. Um, uh, how that I can always call on Him. I have been in places and in, at times that um, I listen to that voice. I listen to that voice that's always say, that it's always protected me. If I, I go, if I'm in a place that, and I hear, I feel that feeling that says you don't need to be here. You need, you need to get out of here. That's the time I move. And it's time that, and when you, when when God is moving, that's when you need to move. You need to move with Him. So uh, tonight, just uh, call on Him. Call on Him. Let's go. But we'll go back to Sister Margaret. We're going to part, do some praying and reading some requests. And all right. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, sorry about that. Would have been a nicer introduction, people, but I will work on it better next time. It's, it's, it's quite amazing right. I hadn't coughed all day until I get up here and yeah. then my allergies kicks yeah. in. All right. Uh, but anyway, uh, we have a call here that says, uh, when uh, are we going to be back on live TV? Well, if you'll notice up in the corner of your screen right now, we are live. We are very much alive. Yep. Robin and Alan are very much alive. And uh, uh, our, our cameramen are. They're the only ones here in the studio. The reason we haven't uh, been able to go back to our singing and like we have been because of the rules that, the, uh, that our governor has put down to try to help uh, curb all this uh, disease that has hit the land. And uh, thank you. And uh, we're having to keep as few as possible uh, around. So that's uh, 
that's what we're doing. And you know, this would have been uh, our telethon week this week and next week. We uh, we had it already scheduled for telethon. Well, and uh, of course, everyone loves to hear all of the, our friends that come in about that time and uh, uh, get to visit with them. But until then, we're we're just having to kind of bring as few as we can in to keep the uh, keep the uh, thing going. But uh, we are live tonight. Whenever you tune uh, during this time and you see that L-I-V-E in the corner, you can know we're still a kicking, all right? <laughs> all right, we, we have, uh, like I say, we can't have a telethon yet, but we have some good uh, faithful friends that has uh, remembered us. And here um, we have Veda um, Powers from Pulaski County, $50 needs prayer, uh, has a gout in her right foot, lost, uh, uh, okay, uh, Oh, uh, last July and August the 4th, lost a son and a daughter and has has uh, two daughters left. Bless her heart. Veda from Pulaski County. Cleta Jones from Menifee, tw uh, $25 in memory of Sylvia Jones. Martha McIntosh, uh, $25. And Betty um, McGuire from Madison, $25 and, and prayer for Jimmy and Dallas. Donald and Renee Anglin from Rock Castle, $50 a gift. And from Fort Wayne, Indiana, Stella Day has called in a $500 a contribution to WLJC. We really appreciate that. Stella Day from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Bless your heart. I don't know you, but uh, the Lord does, and that is, that is great. We have another uh, request, prayer request here. Lily Cameron from Rockcastle, her granddaughter was killed in a car accident a couple of days ago. And you know, this is why that we want to keep WLJC on the air, always have someone here to help pray with you because we've all been through that death scene. We know, we know how you're feeling. There's not a word that in the history of man that can help you, no. only God can, Amen. only God can. So that's why we like to uh, for some of us to be here to, uh, in case you need someone to agree with you. A lot of people don't have a church home. A lot of people uh, really doesn't have somebody they know that they can call on. And so that is one thing that we have uh, made in our policy. The request always comes from. Heal them, deliver them, meet every financial need they have. Give them favor. Give them favor in the eyes of man. In Jesus' name tonight, we give you praise and glory for doing it. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Uh, okay, we have still five minutes. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, we do really appreciate those or people four minutes. that have <laughs> called in and, and made, uh, you know, a donation and and of course you don't have to wait to telethon as no. uh, as these have done tonight uh, 
like I said earlier, you know, the Lord can speak to you. He can tell you exactly how much to give, and and we really do appreciate it because uh, we know how important this station Amen. is. Amen. Amen. You know, it's uh, it's not uh, it's not just the lost souls, even though that's the that's the reason we're here. But there's a lot of people that needs prayer for other they things. Need healing touch you know, they stuff. need yes. they need healing in their body and yeah. and the uh, emotions healed. The, yeah, they need uh, you know these things going on in their life. Just as, like this lady said, she had lost some family members yeah, just two grief. days ago, oh my and gosh. Uh, you know that to me is uh, is one of the roughest things that we go through down here in life is losing somebody close to us. I, I can't imagine anything any harder than that, but uh, but God is able. God is able to comfort you and yes, take care of you. He's and, well able. And like Sister Margaret said, we don't have the words. If we could just speak words and, and that pain would leave, then yes. we would, but we don't have the words, but we know that God is the comforter that can be there for you. And, and we really do appreciate uh, all of you. We appreciate the station. Uh, and the opportunities that we've had over the years Amen. To, Amen. to come here and work with all those that volunteer. It's just a good good place, uh, you know, that uh, God's using greatly. But uh, do you want to come back to you, Sister Margaret? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, looks like we have some more uh uh, folk that have called in, uh, some of them are suffering from anxiety and panic. That's like Robin was talking about, mm -hmm. and depression and anxiety. And uh, uh, a mother that is very sick, it says. And uh, from Wayne County, a 85-year-old lady uh, has a friend that has this virus, and uh, and several in her family needs prayer. Well, we appreciate you allowing us to come in and visit with you tonight, and you just continue to pray for the ministry, and as soon as uh, uh, the bands are all lifted to where that we can have uh, our group singing groups back in, we'll, we'll uh, be right here with them. But uh, until then, just pray and seek the face of the Lord. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth out of them all. So right. he will deliver us. He's already promised that. We don't have to we don't have to second guess Amen. that. All right. Once again, thanks to Robin and Alan Rattler for being here tonight and they'll be back before long. So from all of us, good night and God bless you. Stay tuned now for one hour of good gospel music that we have previously recorded. Thank you for being a part of the Hour of Harvest program. We trust you are blessed every time you watch. This program is made possible by your contribution of support. Will you become a financial partner of Hour of Harvest with a one-time or monthly offering? We invite you to send your pledges of support to WLJC, Post Office Box Y, Beattyville, Kentucky, 41311, or visit us online at www.wljc.com. May God bless you.